All right, so in this video, I'm going to be replacing a timing belt on a Toyota Camry 2.0 four-cylinder fuel injection, uh, 1991 automatic. Uh, pretty much just the timing belt. That's pretty much it. I won't be putting any uh, other timing timing components unless they're needed. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug all the sensors here. Alright, so I had to remove the tire in order to get to the crankshaft pulley. So I've removed that tire and I removed the shield that was on, on the uh, inner wall there. So what I'm going to be doing now is with the impact coming in and taking off that crankshaft bolt, it's a number uh, 19 or it's a 19 millimeter socket. All right, so I had to pull out my puller set so I can actually uh, pull that crankshaft out. I thought it was gonna be like a Honda where they just pretty much pop right out. But um, anyway, uh, I've already gone ahead and I've set everything up and now I'm gonna just go ahead and um, put some force on that center bolt there and try to get that thing out. But uh, all that's needed now is to actually go ahead and remove um, the whole timing cover. All right, so with the cover removed there, um, I can see right away that the belt is really loose. So I'm sure I can pull it out. It's, it's broken right there. Um, it might need a seal, I'm not sure, because from what I can see, there's a lot of oil on this belt. The engine mount for this car is a real pain in the ass to take off. It really only took me a matter of minutes to take it off with all my air tools and stuff like that. But uh, on the uh, engine mount here, as you can see, it's a two part. One goes on the engine itself. This is what goes on to the uh, body here itself. But uh, I wanted to show you guys that this has uh, two studs here at the bottom, which needs to be taken off from underneath the car. There's no way you're gonna get this bracket out in order to get this cover out without removing that bracket. So it takes a uh, 14 millimeter um, nuts to, that holds this together and the other one is fine it doesn't need to come off but uh, this could pretty much take like an hour of your time all right so I'm here um, aligning my crankshaft um, timing mark here I've gone ahead and I've cleaned it up and it's really very hard to see I'm just zooming in in and out here but I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a little timing mark right there. 
Oh, I guess it would be about the 11 o'clock position on this crankshaft looking at it from a zoomed out view. Now I'm holding the, the light here at the same time, but I'll try to point it out to you guys. It's that one right there at the tip of my finger, right in the center of my finger right there. And then there's one on that crankshaft, um, or actually on the uh, sprocket, the timing belt sprocket there. And it's really hard to see because it's really dirty. And I checked the seal and it's not the seal that's leaking. I think it's just been sweating oil over time and well, I mean, last time I looked at this um, 15 years back, it pretty much was the same thing anyway. So it's pretty much um, sweat is what it is because engines do sweat oil from time to time. So um, I don't see any seals leaking at all. So my timing marks, they're really hard to see there, but they're set up and I'm ready to put the belt on, which I have right there. All right, so I'm here um, doing the top uh, camshaft um, timing mark here. And I've gone ahead and I've put the belt already in place. But I just wanted to show you guys how I align this. Now you can kind of see there's a hole right here where the uh, sprocket's at. Um, it's, uh, it's actually on the sprocket itself. And then there's a little indentation on the head. Um on the casting and you can't really see it because of the of the strut tower right here because I got a little piece of uh, TIG, uh, TIG rod or filler rod here and what I did was I actually got it up close to where that mark was at slipped this little filler rod in this hole until I was able to um, pretty much as I was turning it the filler rod slipped into the indentation there or the timing mark so it's on there um, it's timed up that's the way how I do it on, on or how I've done it on this um, last time was pretty much I think I did it with a screwdriver a little tiny screwdriver but um, if anyone out there has a one of those flexible cameras that you can get in there, the automotive uh, cameras, you'd be able to see um, that timing mark much better. I mean, that's all I can do to show you guys how it's done. So, I've gone ahead and I've slipped my belt. It's all ready to go. Um, it's getting dark here, so I'm trying to finish this up. And uh, what I'm going to show you guys what to do next is how to put tension on the tensioner pulley here on or on the belt itself when you once you loosen this the spring actually tightens up or actually uh, pulls that pulley upwards or the housing of the pulley so um, what I did to reset this was I loosened it and pushed downwards and then I tightened it up so when I slip my belt on there, all I got to do is loosen this thing up and that spring will bring tension on this. The pulley will get pushed back up or pulled back up by that spring. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate to you guys um, how to pretty much put tension on this belt again or how to get it set. So I'm going to go ahead with my 14 key here and loosen this and I'm hoping, I'm, well I'm hoping this will get captured on the camera you guys might see this move upwards a little bit okay should move sometime now okay so I feel it on there it moved very slightly, but you can kind of see that gap right there. Um, it's gone up quite a bit. And you don't want to force these. Um, I just actually just moved it there, and it actually just went up a little bit. I don't know if that was caught on camera. But you don't want to force these um, because the spring has enough tension to actually pull that thing upwards. So 
I'll go ahead and tighten up my tighten up my pulley here, or tensioner pulley. And I'm gonna go ahead and check all my marks again, but I, I'm not worried about that. I know everything is in place now. But what I'm gonna do, just on top of that, I'm gonna go ahead and crank the engine really quick with um, no crankshaft pulley, of course, but this is just pretty much to see if it actually starts up and then I'll do a really quick shutdown. Yeah. All right, so the car started up, uh, sounds good. Go ahead and start it again. Okay, turn it off. That's good. Timing belt is done. Um, just go ahead and check, I guess, to make sure everything's all nice and tight. And then it's pretty much assembled as disassembled. Now, I know I didn't show you guys how to do the cover, but I mean, it's pretty easy. You can, guys can pretty much download a, uh, a cutaway for off the internet. Um, it pretty much a timing cutaway, and it shows you where all the timing uh, cover bolts go. And there's around, oh, let's see, one, two, three, four. There's around 10 of them. Um, I know there's one that goes here, here, up here, in the back. The one in the center and about three more on the bottom one behind the cover kind of off on the engine in the back so there's quite a bit of them um, if you have a broken timing cover case just go ahead and re replace that or repair it or whatever but I mean I'm pretty much done here with this video I shouldn't have to um, I mean if you guys have gotten this far to where you, you where you can actually take off a timing cover, which is pretty easy. Um, then I'm, I shouldn't have to explain how to do it. But anyways, uh, this is pretty much how it's done. Um, I don't know what else I could say, but uh, if you find this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, and see you guys on the next one.